loading screen. There you go. Now let's uh, let's watch it, guys. Yeah. I think it's very lovely. It's a very definitely very theatrical, very like animated bunch of dynamic animated lights. You did a great job so far. I guess I just want to hear your story a little bit because you know I don't want to sidetrack on anything and kind of make sure we sync with you pretty good. I guess what was your intention there? What's your own thoughts? What's your own concerns and how, where you'd like to go from here? And if there's anything you feel I can uh, give you, provide you feedback on that. That's that like to kind of hit that, be clear about it. So tell your story, yeah. Um, well, to, I wanted to to have a bit of a spooky, uh, 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 sinister in a way uh, feel. I wanted to when he levitates and, and and everything levitates with him, kind of like have a a power surge of everything. You know, it's like the the power is coming down and. and overpowering everything and, and that kind of stuff um, I wanted to have a feeling of like a, a skylight you know with some moonlight coming through um, kind of like oh it's you know the moon is is illuminating him to do this thing or the moon is important you know it's a full moon or something like that mm -hmm. and, and uh, yeah that's that's basically it. I think you eventually hit a lot of pretty much all your intentions are there. I saw like how you progress from shot from shot to shot with Quan. There was a good notes and very good steps and movement. And once again, it's very theatrical, very kind of uh, you know uh, stretch of imagination, leap of faith, I guess so to speak. A lot of going on here with all the light, floating el uh, floating candles. Eventually, anything goes. Uh, the thing is that the um, the only thing that overall, but uh, once again, it's up to you as a, I guess that you you a lighter or any director on this shot. So uh, the thing is that my the way I read the story that something happened to the skull that's um, right here. The skull is I guess get became alive whatnot instead of the uh, girl. Is it correct? Or yes, yes. that's so the story. <laughs> He's trying to he's trying to revive the girl to, to make the girl come back to life. Mm -hmm. And instead it doesn't work and instead the skull is the one that is bring being uh, being brought back to life. Yeah. And then it scares the crap out of him. Yeah. Well that, that's that, that's what uh, pretty much eventually I kind of got the gist you tell the story very well here. The um only, I mean, once again, it's not a note, it's kind of, I just want to toss an idea at you and see how you feel yourself about it. Like right here, this obviously skull is like kind of integrated into the scene. We kind of, it's, we notice it, but it's not too abrupt. It's just laying there on the, sh on the shelf, whatnot. Here's your magic happen here. A lot of glow happens and stuff. And then things down and the skull still floating. Here, what I was when I was looking at first and trying to figure out what it is, what was kind of like maybe throwing me off. The skull is obviously lit very strongly, very strong uh, light, but there's no drop shadow, no everything, no um, no kind of like it just lit from nowhere, almost like almost uh, if it's a ghost or something, but it's not. We know from pre from prior few frames. I was just wondering if I was just wondering. Once again, it's a note. It's more an idea to toss, uh, to toss on you. Like here, we have this magic happen. Where everything get glowing. Uh, there's a lot of glow and feel. I was wondering if just to explain this, uh, instead of just a light that hits him hard and gives him very good, sh kind of very contrast, good shape. Maybe actually allow it to a little bit feel and glow around it. So just indicating that magic is gone from the room. But it was kind of, but it stays with the skull. Something, you know, this moment is gone. But, no, yeah, yeah. but you see. see what I'm saying? But this skull is, skull is actually more like filled and glowing and something happened to it. 
you probably will get across your point much better but also it will be much easier to understand because right now the some sort of light hits it really hard but we don't understand where from where it goes yeah. you see what i'm saying it's kind of out of place but if you glow him a little bit it just overall it became like a, almost a, a gentle light source keep that light maybe not as intense maybe step down a little bit so we can see the shape this beautiful shape that you have so we can read it as a skull it maybe reads the uh, may help you to read the all intention of your story here a little bit better but also like have less confusing why this skull is lit from who knows where on one side but not on the other so to speak does that make sense to you? Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. So that's the only thought that I had. Otherwise, you're in a very good place overall. It's definitely very theatrical, very dynamic. You, the eye overall look where it's supposed to look. Let me move this aside. Yeah. The, uh, you know, all the, all the, um, we see main characters. We see how they interact. We see the skull is playing and then showing up. Candles are there, but they kind of not necessarily stealing it. They're adding to uh, mystique, whatnot. Overall, very successful shot. They are the only thing I would once again I touched on you this idea about the skull, how to maybe bring the skull story a little bit further on, but also resolve the lighting concern has, along the way. Mm -hmm. I'll do that for sure. All right. Well, that's Thank all you. I have. For, that's all I have for this shot. Otherwise, beautiful work. Very well done. Thank you. All right, cool. So let's look at your other shot. I believe uh, I have this guy. Uh, let's see. Yeah, also I mentioned my other review the other day. I'm kind of a little bit, uh, I don't like to do paint overs on the spot because they, they very often tend out to be like, you do it very quickly with, in they cause like compromised records, so to speak. And some people take those paint overs like very directly, very literal note, but it's wow. hard, you know, it's hard to do, um, <laughs> it's hard to do a good paint over like within like a couple seconds. And usually you grab a brush. Yeah. I'd rather talk to you. Yeah. I like talking better than paint overs too. Yeah. I'd rather talk it. We got it. We'd rather toss an idea. So let your imagination go and keep your image yours so to speak just get some ideas and improvise with it see how you how far you can go without being limited too much with some sort of uh, uh, sloppily quickly done reference make sense uh -huh. yeah cool <clears throat> so uh, c can you tell me a little bit about these shots with intention here what's your concerns what you what you think maybe next step or what where I saw your progression on the and the discord yeah, yeah uh, but what what where we're here right now and what's how you would like proceed and what's your concerns and stuff like that yeah i mean the, 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 uh, this is this, this is a, a a scene that actually uh, uh pixar uh, um, have it on their website for free it's ba basically to show off what they do uh, mm -hmm. but then i picked it up and i stripped all the lighting and did a new lighting on it um and my idea was the um, that you know, I mean, this could be a really scary uh, island with this crazy fish, whatever <coughs> thing. But at the same time, it has all these balloons and, and little flags and stuff, which kind of shows that it's either I don't know a party or something like that. So I wanted to give a little bit more of a a happy feeling, you know. Uh, so a a, a a late afternoon, uh, almost sunset kind of feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, basically that's it. So there's uh, almost like two opposite vectors I hear like in intention. On one hand, it's got to be like scary a little bit or like an alarming place. On the other hand, there's a party going on as well. Almost kind of yeah, like I mean, that. Okay, so it's a scary past with a new upbeat beginning, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. 
Well, uh, I, I very like what's happening on the island itself. Like if you just get abstract island, you get this nice uh, happy hour, whatever it is, pre-sunset thing spilling it. There's a nice good core shadow going on here. There's a nice, uh, a lot of good level of contrast going on. We definitely look at it. It's fun to explore the island. Also on the field side, it, there's a core shadow, but we can't, there's an interest in this uh, field or skylight. I don't know how you technically call it, but there's a, we can see this nice little information in the core shadows. Those elements usually, those are done very successfully. Where well, I think a little bit, it's um, feels like a little bit, um, maybe what it's called, a, a disjoint and whatnot, is that, uh, <coughs> and you did have that some of those notes and you're progressing kind of like one step at a time from note to note, is that we have very good, very strong, present, very um, defined sky background here, which is has a little bit of blue in this very strong, whatever it's called, like orange uh, cloud. That's actually also indication where what, what our sun is and where it is roughly located and what's the current situation of that sun is, this cloud information. If it was a smaller piece of sky somewhere, like in the corner, probably we could go away, uh, get away much easier with what how we uh, light our object. But because it's so big and present, looks like an environment here, we need to kind of keep it in mind and kind of bring and integrate it into our geometries here. Uh -huh. And uh, once again, you did have those notes before. The biggest discrepancy that appears from the, uh, still appears, is that discrepancy between the water and its uh, chunks of sky, big uh, orange sky, versus your bluish, uh, this thing, at this point, slightly purplish uh, waters. And the, the situation with water, it's a reflective, surface and with the reflective surfaces and that's also complicated is that it's complex reflective surface it's not just like flat image or anything you know it ripples and waves and all that stuff brings a lot of complexity to it and make it relevant and realistic it's you know the trivial task <clears throat> but what i'm trying to uh hit at here i would expect pretty much eventually you can think of the water as a, up, almost like a mirror. If it was a flat, flat, uh, very calm day, it probably would be flat like a mirror. It will probably reflect the sky above. And we almost sometimes, barely sometimes it's hard to see where the horizon line between sky and the water. That's, but that's it's a, a perfectly flat um, water surface. Here you have some turbulence and waves and ripples. Nonetheless, this orange, very strong orange piece, especially on this side of the image. Here at least we have a kind of blue kind of chunk and we kind of like that's closer in color values that you kind of happen to have in your water so far. We, you, you kind of can get away with it, but right here this big orange piece and it's kind of like disjointed from this reflective water surface at this point just in color. Uh -huh. You see what I'm saying? <clears throat> So I'm not sure exactly how you uh, do you actually use this background as uh, in your scene setup so the water can reflect I tried, it. I tried, I tried putting a, an orange uh, on this last uh, version. I put an, uh, uh, an orange light behind uh, the, the scene so that I could get more uh, um, reflection, color reflection on the, on the uh, water. Yes. I guess it wasn't enough. I'll, I'll, I'll push it all, uh, further. Yes, yeah, that's exactly what I would probably almost suggest. I think what will help a lot in this particular scene, if you create almost like very big, almost size of this cloud, could be far away, but kind of like cor uh, corresponding in size light with some good specularity value, spec, spec values, and actually uh, heat all not just water but also your your uh, s structure your island because technically this is very bright orange t usually it's a reflective kind of big geometry you can look at this way and actually get this little orange dream or spill 
on the on this geometry as well you see what i'm talking about but also more importantly hopefully uh water can pick up a lot of this orange highlights it doesn't need to be consistent it could have like dark and bluish kind of ripples in here but some of this especially further in the horizon should should get a lot of this orange kind of streaks and highlights in here does that make sense yeah yeah totally. yeah. yeah and pick up almost like maybe some sort of this color kind of saturated enough and uh you know like uh that uh, uh but not this i guess not too saturated but kind of like so, somewhere you find like nice good representation probably this is maybe a little bit too saturated could be look strange but some somewhere like mid level uh, mid levels of this uh, tonality <coughs> that can represent enough but once again both we will benefit water the most but also some of the serene spills from this big orange crowd on the geometry would be really nice too uh -huh. that's my thought yeah. That. yeah well after you bring that uh, there you might actually as a consequence slightly revisit your key you whatever what i would do but, but once again it's just a suggestion it's up to you as an author you I would like it to keep it yours i may swing the key a little bit further <coughs> to the side allow almost a little bit more of this beautiful uh core shadow that you have with these bluish details <coughs> uh -huh. okay but make that sun a little bit more saturated <coughs> So almost that would yeah. represent the color that we see on the on that cloud that the same light is lit in and maybe potential well sometimes when you swing it uh, to the side because of the glancing angles intensity kind of tend to boost itself without actually increasing intensity but you may look into actually um, kind of maybe even boost a little bit of uh, intensity as well i would push the little bit saturation up and intensity a little bit up but also swing it to the side a little bit so it has a uh, right now you're almost like half of it lit and half of it out we almost could maybe allow like one third lead and two third in the core shadow and then you'll have another this slimmer about 20 percent of this gentle rim from this cloud also spilling in but also color scheme would be nice it would be nice saturated strong this orange from the key more like gentle rim also orangish from the cloud and they already have this nice bluish purplish whatever feel and this orange purple and back to a little bit orange is could be nice color color structure and it's this blue also justified because we do see a little piece of this bluish sky we can assume that somewhere here and right above us there may be a blue sky or like bluish sky and uh that's what i would do with uh geometry and slight shift on the on the light uh on the lights positioning and color saturation and intensities does it make sense to you yeah yeah totally totally yeah yeah but more importantly i'll look at the um uh, well quite frankly what you actually can con may, may concern is actually if you already have this one big rim for this cloud from screen rate from screen um right you may consider another similar light but from the screen left sometimes they call it kick light it's usually come on the key side and also maybe uh, try to bring in either some sort of um I would probably still look into the something what we want to reflect in the water maybe some of this more oranges more like orange orange situation so we can get slight extra boost and some extra kick or rimy on the side as well but hopefully get some sort of those streaky orangey highlights in the water that will kind of set your settle your water with the background a little bit better does it make sense so kind of like two rims uh, one is strong on the side another one kick from the screen left and maybe slightly pushing to your key a little bit to the side and boosting saturation a little bit otherwise you already look pretty beautiful with just kind of sewing it all elements together it would be great cool. yeah awesome yeah. thank you do you use any like HDRI in here that kind of corresponds to your ba background sky view or how do you approach it technically? Uh, no, no, I've, I've used a, uh, <coughs> oh, how do you call it, uh, uh, real sky, no, uh, uh, um, it's not an HDRI, but it's the, like, it's the actual sky or something 
like that. I don't remember I see. the exact. But it's like you, you put the you put the date and the hour and everything, and it calculates where the sun will be for you or something like that. I see. Oh, I see. I see what you mean. So, but once again, yeah, because you're here, you you have looks like you pick up this particular sky, and it's very significant element that kind of we cannot disregard. If you have this reflective reflective domes, that's what sounds like you have. Okay, I'm trying to cons speak conceptually. You may might want to make sure that at least if you can tweak it to some degree that some of this, like maybe some blue right in the top and this oranges, orange lit clouds on the uh, lower levels are kind of represented because that's what usually the more like realistic environment you, on your scene you set it up and then especially if you can use like some sort of global illumination and stuff those things start to get resolved for you and almost half of the job of everything of everything getting integrated together gets done and then you just like yeah. bring some complementary keys and complementary fields and some interest lights and then you're done but if you kind of engineer everything from a lower level then you kind of want to try to uh, compensate for it or you know uh, uh -huh. simulate it whatnot that that's what i'm thinking yeah yeah all right i'll do that all right well i guess that's about all i had uh, for this image do you have any um do you have any thoughts or concerns or like follow-up or questions or something that you'd like to I'll, I'll work those. Uh, show you uh, tomorrow or the next day. So yeah, make sure you keep it yours. You see, yeah, that's why I don't want to do too much paint over, yeah. so that you can kind of get an ideas and uh, roll with them. Sounds good. Cool. All right. Awesome. Cool. So, do you want to try to ex uh, experiment and get a, uh, take a look at your this uh, latest image? I mean, Well, probably won't touch that one today okay. for sure. Well, we can just cover it just as well, just because I got a session. Because I'm, yeah. I, I'm trying to pencil people with whom I would rather talk versus, because some of those can be done easily in, in writing, just like little nug nuggets. But when you're going to try to get an idea, what's intention in the image, what's the story, then it's easier to talk than do like wild guess. And I expected a couple other people with whose with whom I could review the images, but for some reason they hadn't showed up yet. So if you don't mind, let's look at your latest uh, work. Perfect. So uh, I guess there's two images. They go in, you should look at them in, in pair or like one at a time. So it's, 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 it's like, it's the same scene mm -hmm. and, and, you know, a, a, a close up and a, a wide shot. Uh, shall we look? Let's look maybe at the uh, more like master back, uh, like uh, for the out shot. Yeah, I didn't mind. Yeah, they're great. Well, I guess I'll just keep it like this. Can you see my screen okay, guys? Hello? <coughs> well, tell me about the. Uh, what, what's going on here? What's the story and uh, what's your intentions and what's your thoughts? What do you think is the next you want to try? Andrew? Andrew, I think your mic is off. Is it? It was, uh, at least I couldn't hear you for like last uh, couple minutes. Well, I guess I just wanted to hear your story. What's the what's the oh, shot? Okay. What's the intention here? What's you going for? What's your concerns? And what do you think is you want to try next and stuff like that? Um, my my uh, my idea with the shot was just that this this guy was, you know, end of day, beginning of night, or actually late night. Either he is worked all day, and then he it's it's a summer day. He decides to sit outside and relax a little bit or maybe he's coming back from a party or 
something and you know it's like oh I'm just gonna sit here for a while mm-hmm. and uh, and relax you know in front of my house and nothing nothing too complicated but yeah that was the idea well very nice very 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 totally very solid start <clears throat> I see that it's inter- it's I guess definitely we, we see the main character going on there. He's uh, he's featured there. There's a strong light from the from behind from behind him kind of hides him highlights him uh, nicely, but we don't necessarily compete. We see where it's coming from. Everything seems logical. We see the dark corners. There's some details in it if you want to explore it, but they're not. It just they're not like dominating or stealing the uh, attention. There's a uh, one one thought or idea that came to mind for this particular shot, like late evening shot, is that um, color temperatures. And um, what usually happen at uh, this time of the year? I don't know if you have a do you have a particular reference that you had in mind? I didn't didn't look at the at no, the I, other I didn't have any. Okay, you you kind of improvising and uh, as uh, kind of what, what usually yeah. yeah. What usually happens is that this time of the year, the um, this tungsten light it tends to be like very orange color, whatnot. While the moonlight, I mean during the day we have this bluish, uh, the sunlight and the moonlight they have like a lot of blue color in it usually. And then we, when we light the scene, whether we're lighting in outside or, in, or inside in photography, we're shifting this what called white point. We choose whether it's white point we're going to be closer to the tungsten orange color and we turn this uh, this orange orange spill more like into white or we choose if we if we shoot outside then we choose that this bluish sun and sky light is the white point and then we shift that white point to um to make that bluish uh, bluish daylight turn into white source so to speak and all other colors are just usually correspondingly. What usually happens in the uh, um, <clears throat> at night that uh, saturation of this skylight gets even more like intensely blue, so to speak, even cooler. And <coughs> what I'm trying to arrive here is that <coughs> you definitely have some sort of tungsten light source inside of this building. And it's tech, usually kind of oranges. Here, I mean, you have this color, but it's probably represent, more represent curtains than the light at this point. But we're kind of like more interested in what's happening here. What it is, it's usually tend to be like very orange amber by nature. On the other hand, we have this moonlight or late night skylight that usually very blue. Here it would be nice where we would, if you can, figure out where is our white point, so to speak. Very often it doesn't have to be one or the other. Very often we set it somewhere like in between. But what happens usually if we set it somewhere in between, we want to see. Li- I would probably would be nice to see a little bit more um, difference between this light can be much more amber, and the moonlight could be much. A bit quite a bit bluer you see what I'm saying pretty much push push those color saturation apart a little bit further because because right now you have a good photography but it almost like because the light source uh, it has it has some color but it's very gentle saturation on your uh, tungsten light in here also moonlight it has uh, some color but it's very desaturated it's almost to some degree, if there's no this uh, pretty much couple like color spills in here, it's almost m- appears like maybe like black and white photography to some degree. You see what I'm saying? And as photography, it looks very nice. The values are very great, beautiful. But I think would be very interesting um, if you can try to push this tungsten light a little bit more towards amber, orange. And the moonlight a little bit more towards this blue, bluish, purplish hues. And once again, kind of push the color saturation between tungsten light in the inside of the houses and moonlight slightly further apart. Allow for a little bit more color contrast. I think that could be an interesting version here. Cool. 
Does it make sense? Yeah, it does, totally. Okay. So otherwise, it's already, as a photography, like photography-wise, looks pretty great. Character is there. We totally see where things are coming from. Details uh, nicely kind of showing up casually on the site. It's uh, like value-wise, it's a already beautiful shot. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's about it. So, uh, any thoughts, concerns, or you want to follow up, or something that maybe clarify a little bit? No, no, that's it. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'll work. I'll work on that. Okay, that that's that's about. It. I think we covered your shots. Let's see if uh, let me ask audience if anybody.